talked about it, Jen. I don't think there is a hotter team coming into this tournament because they have the two-time ACC Player of the Year. And Elizabeth Kitley, Kenny Brooks told me as soon as she stepped on the campus, she changed the culture. They were a team that once relied heavily on the three ball. Now everything goes through her. She has 18 double-doubles on the season, but what she doesn't have is an ACC tournament title. Her quest starts now. Miami Hurricanes will start off with the basketball. They are in green, a little bit of orange and white on the shorts as well. Virginia Tech defending in white. Julia Williams picked up the dribble, needs a little help. She'll get it in the form of Jasmine Roberts. Roberts tries again, Kitley defending. So this is a Miami team that's scrappy, they're small. They will play off the bounce. Virginia Tech will play off the pass. Ella Pendande. Off the back iron, and now here come the Hokies. They're starting five, led by their point guard, Georgia Amore, and of course, Kitley inside. But Taylor Soul, what an addition she has been transferring into the program this season as well. Kitley's first shot a miss. So you have to mix up the way you guard Kitley. They're playing her straight up on the first possession, but trust me, Miami will have a package of different looks to give her trouble and to try to keep her off balance. Get a look at the starting five for Miami. Foul on the floor. Joe Vasili, Carla Fountain, Fatou Sissoko Stevens are officiating crew tonight. Kanna Trailer, the player for Virginia Tech, committing the foul. Elizabeth Kitley has 41 assists on the season, but she averages a double-double, and they will play through her on every possession. This is a Virginia Tech team that clearly knows their offensive identity. Hokies did lose to the Hurricanes in the regular season. It was down in Coral Gables. Big win for Katie Myers Club in early January. She's the winningest coach all time for Miami. Her team made that spectacular run all the way to the ACC championship game last year. And actually, Virginia Tech also coming off their best ever year in the ACC tournament. They made it to the semis last year. They have an opportunity to get back to the semifinals with a win tonight. Here comes a dig. Trailer. Destiny Harden leaves trailer. You're going to have to make some shots around Kitley if you're Virginia Tech, because Miami, like I said, is going to mix it up. So we've already seen two different ways with two touches for Kitley on the block. Still looking for our first points for either team. Kayla King. Taylor Soul on the glass. Pokey swing around. Georgia Amor for three. And that is vintage Kenny Brooks offense. Extra pass. Turned down a good shot for a better on an offensive rebound. They strike quickly by moving the ball and reversing sides of the floor. Destiny Harden who's been a big time player here in Greensboro over the years. Huge part of that Miami run last year to the final. Amor wants another. Fendande calling for it inside. This is Jasmine Roberts, sophomore out of Jacksonville, Florida. Lost her balance a little, Pendande picks it up. Pendande gets deep position inside. So she knows she can score one on one, and that's her offhand. She's a lefty. You can bury Kitley in the rim, and she can't block your shot. And Kitley, a top shot blocker in the ACC. Now she tries to go to work. Immediate double team by the Hurricanes. Amor, short corner. Kitley on the glass. She's also number one in the league in rebounding. And you see why. Yeah, there's some toughness right there in Kitley. In traffic, great traffic re offensive rebound. Five, two, Hokies in the lead. Haley Cavender. Six to shoot. Pendande decides just to go it herself. Oh, 
One for eight start for the Hurricanes. Virginia Tech not much better, two for seven. Sewell to Kitley. Three Hurricanes surrounder. Well, they love that little up screen. It's a shallow cut and an up screen by Amor for Kitley. Roberts Miami was ready for it. That's why they were crowding the paint. And Kenny Brooks, I mentioned the record setting season that his Virginia Tech team has had. They finished tied for second in the ACC. They're a three seed here in this tournament. Both of those the highest finishes in program history and top seed. 14 ACC wins, that's the most in program history. And of course, they have won their last eight. That is also a program best. Into the game is Kyla Oldacre, the 6'6 freshman for the Hurricanes. Well, you got to keep challenging Kitley because that's one way to get her out of the game is to put some pressure on her defensively. As good as she is, you got to go at her. Deja Gregg gets it back from Kitley. Gregg is a really good three-point shooter from the stretch four position. And you'll see Liz Kitley hit that turnaround a lot, and Gregg was there to clean it up just in case. So you know that Virginia Tech is going to dive to the weak side to rebound. When Kitley catches, the four player goes immediately to the opposite side of the rim. You gotta be prepared to box that person out. Under 10, again for the Hurricanes, Roberts. Offensive rebound, and it's Julia Williams who was really the big time scorer for the Hurricanes in the first meeting with the Hokies, had 23 points in that Miami upset. Kitley was left open. Yeah, they weren't quick enough to tag. Speaking of quick, spinning to the basket was Sol, but it is out of bounds. It's a five point pokey advantage. We are in the locker room. We are on the bus. We heard a similar speech yesterday from Miami. Don't get off this bus unless you plan on winning. Well, they did it yesterday against Boston College, 84 69. Amor with three on the shot clock. Wow, that's a tough shot. That's good D and better offense. Boy, I like saying that. <laughs> Amor, all ACC first team point guard for the Hokies this season. Carla Ariavets in the game for Miami. Gets it back from Haley Cavender. Oldacre in for Pendande. On the inside, she sets a screen. Williams, short. But Haley Cavender can rebound now. She's not just a scorer, but she can do that too. I ran into the Cavenders this morning in the hotel and they were ready at about 11 a.m. They couldn't believe they had to sit around all day waiting for the game to start. I'm sure they found something productive to do because those two got uh, boundless energy. Cavender twins spending three years at Fresno State joining Miami this year. And you said it yesterday, Debbie, to play in atmospheres like this, the ACC tournament. That's why they're here. Williams. Ice cold start, though, for Miami, other than that Cavender three. Hurricanes two for 14 to start. Amor, quick. Boy, Liz Kitley hasn't seen too much of the basketball. Got her points off an offensive rebound. She has two in the game. Cavender. And she was already holding up that follow through thinking she had another. Amor with the left. Barry Vets. can you keep up? You gotta make it though. You gotta just make it on the right side of the basket. You didn't need to switch, shift to the other side. You can see Georgia Amor, the junior point guard out of Australia for the Hokies, just telling everybody, take a breath, calm it down. Greg, I mentioned she's Tell a good three-point shooter. She is their better three-point shooter, and when they go with this big lineup, she is at the three. Taylor Soul at the four. She was cool, calm, and collected. One of the most improved this year. She's been able to do. I mean, I had an early scout on her. I was in 
Blacksburg in October for practice. And when I was in practice, I watched them go through shooting drills. And I noticed immediately Deja Gregg's range and ability to knock down triples, which was going to definitely help stretch around Elizabeth Kitley. So you got to come with a long closeout on her because she can shoot that. 39% three-point shooter on the season, Deja Gregg. So what happens is when Kenny Brooks puts her back in that right slot on the same side of the floor as Kitley, there's more space to make the entry pass into Elizabeth Kitley. I think if you put on a Virginia Tech uniform and you play for Kenny Brooks, you probably not only shoot the three, but have improved in shooting the three since coming to Blacksburg. Well, let's just start with a simple pass and catch and catch on the move and, you know, be able to attack a closeout. And then work off screening action. I mean, it's a progression for shooters. See, look at Cavender's got to come out a little bit farther. There's a switch. Ten to shoot. They go inside to Kitley. Six now. Taylor Guyman in the game. Right back to the ACC Player of the Year. And she gets the roll. Four points for Kitley. So that is on the two side. It's a great repost and a beautifully executed step away. Reverse pivot by Kitley. Hokies bringing that inside outside threat. Kitley on the inside. This is a foul against the Hurricanes. Watch Kitley. This is on the repost. And then she creates space away from the defense to be able to elevate into her jump shot with that reverse footwork. It's a beautiful thing when it's done well by Biggs. So the Hokies with the best post player in the league, one of the best in the country, and they are the best three-point shooting team in the conference, ranking first in both three-point percentage and three-pointers made. Greg, almost the same spot. That one, though, along okay. two. That's what I'm talking about. And I know that Coach Meyer's team was prepared for that when they went with this big lineup. Now they've gone back to the smaller lineup with Greg at the four. She still gets the slot three off. 7-0 Virginia Tech run, 12-point lead, just five points in the game for Miami. They got to get to the free throw line because they're struggling to score. Well, the Shade Wire had the big game yesterday for Miami. She took that shot. Destiny Harden came flying in. Greg was already on the floor. It is a foul on Harden for Miami. And you see the push off before she falls over Greg. Yeah, that would be why Greg was on the floor. So foul on Harden, under 10 to go. Hokies looking for a few more before the first quarter is over. Greg, no, she won't get it, but hey, more will. <laughs> Who wants the three when you're playing for Virginia Tech? You come from anywhere. Four triples in the first quarter. 12 of their 20, and Amor with a little step back top moment but 20 points for the Hokies up 15 over Miami the Hurricanes surely struggling two for 17 from the floor those five points tying for their fewest in any quarter this season I tell you what I think Taylor Soul might have a future in coaching because she led that entire huddle and it's very interesting because she started with the defensive end she didn't talk about the threes that were put up but she said, I am very happy with how everyone has been able to step in for one another. But that goes back to what Kenny Brooks was telling us about how he had such a veteran group. He trusts them. He has five coaches on the floor because they really do their work. Students of the game. So trust their input in the huddles. I can see that. I can see Taylor Soul, T. Soul as a coach. I, I think they're so connected. I think this is a group with great chemistry. They play like it. You can tell they enjoy playing with each other. And they're clicking on all cylinders offensively. I mean, that's their fifth triple. The ACC's top three-point shooting team looking like it. That was Kayla King on the last bucket. This is Hannah Cavender now for Miami. And Katie Myers is looking for a spark. Somebody 
to right the ship for Miami. Well, they got to allow their ball pressure to have a factor on the game because they're playing small and they've got speed and they've got to make their speed a factor on, on the defensive end. So full court pressure is one thing. Namor to Kitley. They just do such a good job of clearing it out for her. King steps herself over to the corner. Hannah Cavender first down the floor for Miami. Pendande being kept in check by Kitley. About the time Virginia Tech met up with Miami and Coral Gables in early January. Hokies were three and three to start conference play. But you talk about that chemistry and getting hot at the right time. I mean, they come rolling into this ACC tournament. I think Miami's got to make their defense a little bit more disruptive. Virginia Tech is getting to do whatever they want, and they're going to call traveling on this, which is going to take away the basket. Watch Kayla King, who works so well without the basketball. She's going to come right here off the screen, and she's going to catch and shoot. She knows the defender is on her hip. Late, and that's a bucket. Amor. Left it a little short, but there is Soul for the rebound. Kitley traveled. Right now, Virginia Tech is pass, cut, pass, cut, and Miami's got to take some of that away. They've got to decide how they're going to be more disruptive and not allow Virginia Tech to catch it and shoot it. They're just like a half a step late, and it could be fatigue from how hard they had to play last night. But it also is a really good offensive team that's very challenging to defend. Since the ACC went to this current format with a double bye for the top four seeds, nobody outside that top four has been able to win this tournament. Roberts gets the basket to go. Her Miami team last year came pretty close as a five seed losing in the final. You watch this play right here. I don't know how this goes in. Spins and just <laughs> keeps her eyes on the target and tosses it up, hoping to get to the free throw line for two. Instead, she's gonna get a chance for an and one. Sometimes all it takes is one of those energy type plays to get your team going. This is the first free throw attempted in this game for either team. Deja Gregg back on the floor and seven points off the bench already. Tries a three from the corner. And Virginia Tech is only sending one or one and a half to the offensive glass. They're really getting back and setting their D. Joe Vasili seeing a foul in the paint. It's going to go against Kayla King for Virginia Tech, her second. King will go off for those two personal fouls. Taylor Guyman, a senior out of Hanover, Pennsylvania, comes back on the floor. Cavender. Without Kitley, they go five out motion. They run their chin stuff. They get really good ball movement. The ball never gets stuck with Virginia Tech. This Hokey team coming in with an overall record of 24 and four, 14 and four. Conference play finished tied for second. They are the three seed here in Greensboro. Batted away by the long arm 
hands of Deasia Gregg. Trailer has her shot blocked. Lachey Dwyer. She can bring it now for Miami. She comes flying in to make this play. And oh, even Trailer, like sometimes I don't understand why players don't put two hands on the ball there to finish. You know, you don't want to bring the ball to the defense, but you want to go rim body ball and you want to protect the ball with your body and score. A lot of players doing that one handed play now. And I understand if you're trying to quickly get it up, but in that situation, you knew the contact was coming. Hurricanes with the steal and the score. The Dwyer changed the game last night when she came in off the bench and she is doing that right now for Miami, giving them a little bit of a momentum swing. A 6-0 run for the Hurricanes. The Hokies, meanwhile, have missed their last six shots. Soul, nobody really stepped to her, and that's a problem. You no, know, she can make that shot. In the shoot, between the elbows. That is her consistent range. What you don't want, if you're Miami, is for Taylor Soul to get her groove back. The All-ACC second team selection. Not scoring as well, just three points per game, three for 11 the last two. Dwyer, she can't get it to roll in, and that's a foul on DeAsia Gregg. Pendande was going for the rebound, she was fouled. Her Miami team trying to make a run and keep up with the Hokies. So we've got this really cool property downtown. ACC Player of the Year, Liz Kelly for Virginia Tech. Sure hope that Tania Latson, who led the ACC in scoring as a freshman, is able to get back for Florida State and get healthy. Neil Ivy, what a job she did as Coach of the Year. If you were watching earlier, you saw how Celeste Taylor leads her Duke team defensively and a little more hardware. Another trophy for Liz Kelly. It's the second straight year. She wins the KO Scholar Athlete of Year of the Award award of the year. She is an <laughs> impressive young woman with a bright future in whatever she decides to tackle next. She does have a year of eligibility to come back. She is eligible for the WNBA draft. She will have some decisions to make after the season. Dwyer left open. I'm sure she would have handled that much more beautifully on how she got that trophy and that's Go over to Angel now. Some shiny hardware that Elizabeth Kitley continues to add to her collection, but it's not actually her collection. I was told that all of the trophies, all of the game balls that she receives, she actually leaves them in Kenny Brooks' office. So he probably has recruits coming in, and he was like, yeah, I was a baller one time in my year, but those are actually Elizabeth Kitley's honors. <laughs> well, Kenny was a pretty good point guard back in the day with our colleague, Corey. Alexander. But yeah, that's got to be quite the collection of trophies that Liz Kitley is racking up. I'm sure cousin Corey's watching this game. He's a big fan of his cousin, big cousin Kenny. And then you see the honors and the incredible achievements that Elizabeth Kitley has brought to Virginia Tech. She's not done either. I think she might have an All-American award waiting for her on the All-American team be hard to argue against that in any way. And really, Virginia Tech doing a lot of their damage so far here tonight without a ton of help from Kittler. Harden left open in the corner. Kittley does try to get her hands on the rebound. Can't quite hang on. Miami ball under the basket. Miami foul turns it over. Roberts picks up her second. So if Miami can defend the three a little bit better, that's 15 of their 27 are from outside the arc. They've done a decent job on Kitley. She's taken eight shots, but she's only made two of them. I would call that good work. But this Virginia Tech team with a lot of weapons in the arsenal. That one right there, though, 
all the ACC teams know what that looks like. Hard to stop. Six points for Kitley, the all-time leading scorer in Virginia Tech history. Earned that earlier this year. Well, you could hear that as Deja Gregg hit the floor. Good to see her get up so quickly. She has whistled for the foul, though, Greg. Yeah, she just runs, tries to run through Pendande. Good sportsmanship between the two, though. You know what I like to see? Knock somebody down and pick them up. Wire. Through the door screens and trailer defends it well. Five on the shot clock. Dwyer. Good finish. She is so explosive. Has a quick jump. She's locked in last night and she's locked in today. 19 points in Miami's win against Boston College yesterday. She was 7 and 10 from the floor. Four points tonight. Soul thinks about it. That's a good defensive scout. Not to come out and guard. Haley Cavender. Taylor Sewell, for all she does well, 26% from three-point range. More dangerous, closer to the basket. Amor, though, she's downright lethal from out there. Kitley, held in check, trailer. Gets her own rebound. Who wants it more? Right now it's Virginia Tech. Guyman. This is what she does is shoot threes. Nothing easy for Miami. Pendande. Offensive rebound from Haley Cavender. Had nine rebounds yesterday for Miami. Tough first half offensively for Miami. And the Hurricanes are gonna turn it over. That's the sixth turnover of the game. So that hasn't particularly been their issue in this first half. Just cold shooting, 21% for the Hurricanes so far. Miami changing their pressure. They're going to some trapping defense. Oops. Oh, Destiny Harden jumped right over Georgia Amor. It turned into a game of leapfrog all of a sudden. <laughs> Good pass on the diagonal. <laughs> Watch this. At, I mean, this is what you call a ball fake. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, come on, that has to be a foul, though. That has to be a foul. I mean, <laughs> leapfrog is not allowed unless you get all the way up and over without touching, I suppose. <laughs> We've seen some very interesting things in the night session. <laughs> well, Virginia Tech in the lead, 29-13. The Hokies could have the last say of the first half. But they're going to have to get a stop to do it. Miami looking for the final shot. Hannah Cavender. Cavender gets it back, goes inside for Destiny Harden. She's fouled and will go to the free throw line. Destiny Harden's ability to shoot the three and invert to the block is really challenging to guard for anybody in the ACC. And when she goes to the NCAA tournament, when you don't have as much time to prepare, she's a tough check. We all remember the shot she hit last year to beat Louisville and upset them and it propelled them into the finals. First time ever for Miami and coach Katie Meyer, who's the all-time winningest coach in the history of Miami basketball. And that's what Destiny Harden did second round yesterday, but you go back two years ago, she matched her career high with 27 points here in Greensboro, did that against Virginia Tech. Matched it last year in that game you just mentioned against Louisville. That was just her first point though tonight. Now she's two for two from the line.
So Virginia Tech will get the ball back here. 2.6 seconds left in our first half. Trailer takes a couple of the dribbles, half court launch. Not quite there. But the Hokies nearly doubling up the Hurricanes in this first half. Georgia A. Moore knocking down three triples to help the Hokies' offensive efforts. She's talked primarily about the first quarter. She said, I felt like we were impatient and a bit selfish offensively. They only had one assist at halftime. She said, we have to make sure that we're doing a better job finding one another and playing within our roles. She felt like the jitters were something that they dealt with in the first half, but wanting to make sure that everyone is playing within themselves. Harden, three on the shot clock. Havender, it's out of bounds. And it'll be Virginia Tech ball. So they run a clear out for Williams to take Amor, and Williams turns it down. And I think that play was by design to try to put a little pressure on Georgia Amor on the defensive end, because this set right here for Kenny Brooks, he's gonna get Georgia off the ball. Look for her on the skip pass as Miami's going to trap. Here is Amor. Kayla King, plenty of time to line it up. Haley Cavender, handling the ball, looking inside for Williams. Tough to get up and over Kitley. Well, and it was so on the backside, that's why she tried to go to the other side of the rim. Miami shows that half court trap on one possession, back to their man. Liz Kitley, the ACC Player of the Year the last two years, six points in the first half. She had 20 in a regular season loss at Miami. And boy, she is just getting a lot of contact, but she never gets ruffled. Katie Meyer thinks there's travel, but she is poised in a crowd, isn't she? Two hands, good balance. Where Taylor Soul did a good job getting over the top of that screen. Cavender. Lost it. Trailer and Soul on the break. Taylor Soul with some flair. Miami with some. Hey fans, remember to download the ACC Three Point Challenge app presented by New York Life to help benefit the local boys and girls club. You can score points for your school, and after the tournament, the local Boys and Girls Club will receive a donation from New York Life based on their affiliated ACC team's final ranking. Miami going to get going here, being outscored 4 nothing so far in the third. Dwyer on the floor, along with Hannah Cavender, younger sister by two minutes to Haley, the leading scorer for the Hurricanes on the season. Well, Hannah oh. wanted to go inside, it was but, kicked. Yeah, and that was a, about two seconds on the shot clock, which gives them a fresh 20. How about the Hokies defense? I mean, you gotta give them some credit for how they have been defending. If you watch their body language, they're all in a stance. They're connected on the defensive end. They know personnel. They're going under the right ball screen action. They're going over the right players on ball screen action. That's going to be Destiny Harden on the screen, picking up the foul. That's her second. There's two points in the game for Destiny. Averages a dozen for Miami in the regular season and in the ACC tournament coming into this year, she averaged 13 and a half at 13 yesterday. Trailer. Kitley with two hurricanes around her. It will stay Virginia Tech ball. 
April Trailer, a lefty, is much better on the left side of the floor. As a matter of fact, she shoots 44% from the slot on the left side of the floor from three, according to Synergy. Debbie's got her homework sheet out here. I know it's serious. Anna Cavender, soul skies for the rebound. Taylor Soul, grad transfer, was such a big part of the Boston College program in the last few years before transferring to Virginia Tech this year. Four-time All-ACC selection in her career, Taylor Soul. She has it now, spinning to the basket. Hard to stop her when she goes up. She has perfected that spin move, and that has become her go-to off the bounce. The soul spin? Does it have a name? Can we give it a name? Mm. You're not loving it. No. Okay, I'll keep working. You keep thinking about it. All right. Pendonde, nowhere to go but into the hands of Kitley. Trailer to soul! So pretty! Guys, I think we should just say it's the Soul Train. Ooh. I think that's the one right there. Are you old enough to even know what Soul Train Wait is? Wait a minute, Debbie. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Angel. Oh, good flair. Oh, great look. You got to make some of those shots if you're going to pull the upset. Right now, Miami really struggling offensively. 17% from three. 18% from the floor. The night sessions haven't been all about offense, have they? No, they have not. And after the incredible season we had in ACC women's basketball this season, you know the teams know each well, other well, but defense has been the name of the game tonight. When you get to postseason, possession shrink, the floor shrinks. There's not as much easy buckets. There's not as much transition. You've got to be really good in your execution. Your guards have to take care of the ball. You have to be able to rebound. You have to be able to change the rhythm of the game with your defense. You can't just play one way the whole time. Kyla Oldacre, the freshman for the Hurricanes, is fouled by Liz Kitley. Trying to get some points on the board for Miami. They're getting outscored 10-0 here in the third. So we've got this really cool property downtown. Play and ball. I mean, she always says she looks up to me. I look up to her. Uh, I know you love her. Wow. I'm not even sure if there's anything left to be said, but such an inspiration. That is a story right there. Elizabeth Kitley's older sister, Raven, who is autistic, has been her inspiration and best friend. And she said it was a big reason why she chose Virginia Tech as well. Kenny Brooks went out of his way. Him and his staff, she said, they recruited her almost harder than they recruited me. And because of that, I knew that the Virginia Tech community became her community. Even last year, they held their first Autism Awareness Day and honored her before the game. Raven said it's not a disability, just a different ability. I love that. The only disability is a bad attitude. That's what Dabo Sweeney says. And Raven's a friend of mine as well. She's a big Star Wars fan. And... <laughs> Kenny Brooks sent her recruitment letters and she keeps them in her room and the ACC Network did a brilliant feature on Raven and uh, glad to be friends with Raven and uh, I've got one of those beautiful t-shirts. Kenny Brooks gave me one of those last year because he knew it would mean something to me and I'm so excited for Raven to watch her sister play. Raven's got her own little business that she evaluates fidgets and toys for kids with autism and uh, she does a really great job with it. Well, we told you that Raven is a star. Kelly Graham like had to get an interview on our Nothing But Net set here in Greensboro. It looks like Raven's interviewing Kelly. Uh, she probably was. <laughs> Raven's got a great personality. Kelly with the fake to get past Old Acre says, see you later, freshman. You don't usually see Kelly put it on the floor, but I think she's really dangerous in that short corner area of the floor because she can do so many things with a ball. Kitley now with a dozen. Old Acre 
And there's a foul against the Hokies. I'm sure Raven is cheering really hard on this one because this is a nice ball fake. Put it on the floor and score off the glass. That was a foul on Kitley that last play, her second personal. Miami finally able to put up some points. Got two from the free throw line. A banked in three from Hannah Cavender. They'll take it any way they can get it. The Shade Wire, the spark for the Hurricanes in their win. And she came off the bench yesterday against Boston College. Stoll wants to get to the basket. And she and Kitley both going for the rebound. Last touch by Miami. Well, I know Coach Brooks has got to be pleased with the way his team has executed. To be able to pull apart, it's to pull away. It's not, not pretty, but it works, right? That did not hit the rim the first time, but Liz Kitley just stays with the play. She's got 14. You know, I heard Coach McGraw talking about it on the set about having to wait around all day for the last game, <laughs> keeping your team occupied and focused for that long when so much play has already happened in the tournament. Drive by Dwyer is good. But you know, the other thing too is what's happened today is all the teams that lost in the regular season to their opponent have avenged their loss here today in the tournament. Should Virginia Tech hang on, Miami did win the regular season. And Stephanie Norman, the associate head coach at Louisville, pointed that out to me this morning, that it's kind of cool that, you know, Louisville was able to avenge their loss. They advanced. Notre Dame lost to NC State in the regular season. They advance. Duke. Swept by North Carolina in the regular season advances and Virginia Tech, should they hold on here, unless Miami can make some sort of miraculous recovery. Not when George Amar's left wide open. That is the fourth triple for Georgia Amor, who gets three more. Hokies up big. With one of the best savings rates in America, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. <laughs> Even easier than this. Stop. You're in. Oh, cool. Yep, even easier than that. And with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Coming up later tonight, once we are through with this game, the Nothing But Net crew will have complete post-game coverage of all the day's games with highlights, analysis, and insight. Are they going to break down this play? Because that's hey, Nothing But Net, Nothing Antonelli. But Net right here. <laughs> <laughs> How fun. <laughs> now, Debbie is always trying to get her shots off. I like shooting. <laughs> I know. I like offense. Um, always waiting for somebody to shoot till their arm falls off. Well, we had a couple, maybe, contenders for that award. Amor! Oh, she could get there! Georgia, go ahead and shoot till your arm falls off. <laughs> Georgia Amor with five triples in the game. That accounts for all 15 of her points. I was going to talk about Haley Van Lith for Louisville having a big game. Sonia Citron for Notre Dame. Amor lighten it up. Somehow, she keeps that in bounds and keeps it in possession of Virginia Tech. Amor. Greg, plenty of time. And Miami just can't seem to get anything clicking on either end. Seven on the shot clock. Inside to Kitley it goes. And that's two more for the player of the year. All that individual workout with Kenny Brooks every day. 
All the different tools that she's added to her game on the inside. Really sharp. A little bit of rim, but it goes in. Nearing the end of the third quarter here. It's a 22-10 advantage, Virginia Tech, since halftime. Amor just running circles around the defense. Looking for the right shot. Will it be Kayla King? Well, Old Acre pulled down the rebound. A spin to freedom for Hannah Cavender. And then she is given a lay all the way to the hoop. Still time though. King, that's in her range. Not this time. The Virginia Tech Hokies eye in a spot in the ACC Tournament semifinals. One quarter still to go. Cycling was a lifesaver. It really was. You know, when we first talked about the business, I could tell it was more than just a new direction for you. Yeah. Who will be the big star out of this final quarterfinal game tonight? Couple of candidates. You always have Kitley. She has 16. Georgia A. Moore has been knocking them down from downtown. She's got 15. Kitley. Foul on the floor. Tough night for Destiny Harden in Miami. That's the third personal on Destiny. Now, this is a Miami team projected to be in the NCAA tournament field. They've put together a season. Charlie Cream deems worthy of that. And Liz Kitley adds two more to her total. But, you know, it's tough to come to this tournament and play back-to-back -back games. Well, and Kitley was such a soft touch. And very rarely does she really catch it on the block where she turns and has to make a post move. She's so good at reverse pivoting and catching in space. Her range is getting a little bit better. She's not quite a three-point shooter, although I know she does practice those. But she's pretty good from 15. Well, she's already nearing a double-double. In fact, that's now her 20th point in the game, and she's a rebound away from what would be her 19th double-double of the season, she leads the ACC in that category. Haley Cavender. Harden with the shot fake. She doesn't want her ACC tournament run to end, but the deep hole Miami finds itself in. Old Acre just kept working. Give the freshman some credit. Didn't give up. And that's a third on Kitley. You look at a young player like Kyla Oldacre, just getting started with her career for the Hurricanes. Missed the first 11 games of this season, recovering from a medical procedure. So really get a chance to get a, a true full freshman year in. The 70th annual New York Live ACC Men's Tournament takes the stage here at Greensboro Coliseum on Tuesday afternoon. That's when the first round gets started. We'll have all three first round games for you starting at 2 Eastern on Tuesday right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Taking her time. Trailer with the shot fake. There's the lefty in yep. her spot. On the left side of the floor. Good ball fake. Pull up at the 15 foot mark. Those are just the first points in the game for Trailer. She's averaged 17 in the last two. Cavender in the corner. And that is officially now another double double for Kitley. 53rd of her career, 19th this season. Old Acre goes down, ball goes in the basket. Oh, 
I'm not gonna lie. I'm just waiting for Taylor Soul to drive so I can try out the Soul Train. I'm gonna try Angel and see if it works. But you know, I need to play. Harden. Watch the footwork. A little contact. Step back. Beautiful touch. What you're trying to do is create space between you and your defender. And she does that so well with her incredible footwork. Her reverse pivot is the best. And she's perfected it. And it's comfortable. And over repetition and over and over, it looks so seamless. 22 and 10 for Kitley tonight. And she heads to the bench. Her work here may be done, at least for tonight. It's just getting started for the Hokies in this tournament. I and the Duke Blue Devils as their opponent in the semifinals tomorrow. Amor. Greg. on the rebounding effort there. It does go against Hannah Cavender for Miami. So the challenge for Duke tomorrow will be to change the rhythm of Virginia Tech's offense, not let them do what they want to do. Can you break their timing? Can you take them deeper into the shot clock? Can you turn them over? because they've done a really good job of taking care of the ball tonight. Five turnovers against what I thought would have been the strength of Miami's team tonight in turning Virginia Tech over. But here's what Kenny Brooks has put in all season long. Teams have tried to take Georgia Amor away, but Trailer can handle, Soul can handle, and when she rebounds, they don't need an outlet. When Greg rebounds, they don't need to outlet. When Kayla King, they just spread the floor so well, and they throw over the top of most defenses. 11 points, nine rebounds. So Sol, a rebound away from a double-double in this game. De'Asia Gregg, same situation. She needs one more point, one more rebound. I mean, that is a very balanced and impressive effort from this Hokie team. Trailer knew that one was off the second it left her hands. Might have taken a little knock as she came in trying to follow up her shot. Soul now joins the double double club, her third of the season. I'm surprised it's not low, but 20th of her career. Tendande takes some contact. It's fouled by Greg. That's the third on De'Asia Gregg, Pendande to shoot. Well, Debbie, we've seen everybody now, top four seeds taking the floor for the first time today. Obviously, you look at a team like Notre Dame, shorthanded two major key players out, and Dara Mabry and Olivia Miles. Just looking ahead, wondering what the semifinals will look like for Miami. Looking ahead, expect to see this team in the NCAA tournament, currently projected as a 10 seed by Charlie Green. I don't expect that to change. So who's impressed you the most so far here in Greensboro? Let's just talk about what we've seen on the floor at the Greensboro Coliseum. Well, uh, Louisville played really well. And I thought Sonia Citron for Notre Dame handled her new role exceptionally well. Now, Louisville is going to press them off the bus. <laughs> They're going to bring multiple looks. They're going to speed them up. And Notre Dame is going to play that zone with that size because that's what they can do now is they can, they can play zone. And Louisville's going to have to move the ball and hit shots. Play inside out. Haley Van Lith had the hot hand. She had the hot hand last season and postseason. So that's a, a really interesting matchup, and I'm looking forward to that. That's a matchup where Notre Dame swept Louisville in the regular season, beating them twice. Yeah, the revenge tour could continue here in Greensboro. And remembering that Notre Dame won that game in the game where Olivia Miles got hurt. She couldn't finish out the game for him. 
But Notre Dame still held on and won in Louisville. I think it's really great strategy by Notre Dame not to reveal the status of Olivia Miles. Yeah, why would you? Well, it could affect their seeding, that's why. And they deserve a high seed regardless of the injury. So if, if she can or can't, it doesn't matter. They've already earned it. But I think it's really good strategy not to put it out there and to leave her as day-to-day -day and not tell us what the extent of her injury is. And then thinking about this matchup, you know, can this Virginia Tech team's offense be better than Duke's defense? As I mentioned, the two teams split in the regular season. But we're not quite there yet. 438 still to go. Hokies up big in Greensboro. This tournament is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. Some young fans staying up late, taking in the final game of the day on quarterfinal Friday. We all need a little bit of that energy at this time. Frustrating evening for Miami. Just never could get going in this one. Five points in the first quarter. A little bit better the next two, but just unable to keep up with Virginia Tech. Taylor Stoll at the free throw line, already with the double-double this evening. Here you bets. So with the NCAA tournament looming, presumably for Miami. What do they need to get out of these final few minutes? I mean, obviously a long Miami, way to go, but. Yeah, they're just playing hard right here and just trying to execute and do the best they can. And obviously they're gonna be disappointed in their performance today, but it doesn't overshadow anything that they've done as a, as a team. And they certainly will go back to Miami, probably take a little time and then wait for selection show on Sunday. You know, they got some time, yeah, two got, days off. Yeah, got that week, not this Sunday, but the next for that selection show to find out. We'll be going to the NCAA tournament where they'll go. It's always a fun and exciting day for us as well. All right, so Virginia Tech, what do they take out of this game this evening? Oh, man, they're excited about getting started and uh, keep their dream alive. And they got through a game um, where it was clean and everyone played and they played well and they played connected. And Kenny Brooks is going to get to get some other players in, so he's going to clear his bench a little bit. Good take by Area Vets. It wasn't... Um, the up-the-line pressure that I think they were anticipating from Miami. Yeah, why is that, do you think? We didn't see more of that from Miami defensively. And, you know, they hit five threes in the first quarter, and they really stretched out the defense. Oh, good catch and finish. They give some credit there. Ball never touched the floor for Roberts. Well, and the good news is no waiting around all day tomorrow for Virginia Tech. Two semifinals coming your way at noon Eastern, the first one, Louisville and Notre Dame, and then Duke, and what looks like it'll be Virginia Tech in that second game, 2.30 p.m. slated start. So it's less than 24 hours. It's a quick turnaround, and for Kenny Brooks, his team, you know, didn't get challenged, so they shouldn't be too tired, and hopefully nobody will get hurt here, but Take a look at the bracket, and you could probably go ahead and advance Virginia Tech to take on Duke. And uh, it's going to be exciting. I mean, semifinal uh, 
Friday, uh, Saturday in the ACC is always competitive. I expect the games to be played at a very high level. Neil Ivey, the coach of the year in the ACC, and the regular season champs and the number one seed taking on Louisville. Um, Louisville swept by Notre Dame in the regular season as you take a look at the Cavender Twins. There are a couple of basketball junkies right there. <laughs> They're going to be disappointed, you know, because they wanted to play in the postseason in advance, but at least they know the NCAA is on the horizon for them. Yeah, that opportunity to dance still there for Miami. Well, one positive for sure to add to the list for Virginia Tech is Taylor Soul, the Soul Train Angel, getting back on track tonight after a couple of games where the scoring was down. As I mentioned in her last two, she averages three points per game, was three for 11 from the floor, but 13 points tonight on five of 10 shooting and 10 rebounds. Five assists, too, for Taylor Soul. I love the way Virginia Tech moves the ball. I like their rhythm offensively. They got a great cadence about how they play. Ball doesn't get stuck, it moves. But you gotta play the game low to high against Duke because they're trying to steal it. Or nothing but net crew. Oh, Coach McGraw. Oh, no. Oh, we caught the on, Coach. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Coach. I'll give you guys a heads up over there. <laughs> Kelsey, <laughs> you got her, right? You got her, Kelsey. It's a, You know, it's a long day. These are great days, but they're long days. And I, our crew over there, nothing but net crew, they've been working hard all tournament long. So is Angel Gray, our reporter, working every game of this ACC tournament. Bunch of hard-working women out here on ACCN. Got you covered, the Nothing But Net crew. They'll wake up and be ready after the game. Coach McGraw is probably trying to give us some something about retirement, and, you know, she's probably past her bedtime, but we're not buying any of that. You know, I'll give you one little stat nugget to chew on, friends, as you look forward to second semifinal tomorrow. So I mentioned that. Duke and Virginia Tech split their meetings in the regular season. In the game that Virginia Tech won, Liz Kitley and Georgia Amor combined for 40 points. In the game that they lost, they combined for 11. So certainly those two, no secret that they are a key to the performance of this Virginia Tech team. More film tonight. Are you going to get back on the treadmill and stay out there till 1 a.m. again? It's a great way to get prepared for the game is go to the weight room and walk the treadmill and watch film. It worked last night. I, you, you've, been, you've been on it, Debbie, as you always are, and so too was Liz Kitley. We're going to add her to our quarterfinal star roster there, along with Haley Van Lith and Sonia Citron. Some big games for the big stars here in the ACC. Ballers. All First ACC. team. Yep, mm -hmm. all of them. I think Sonia Citron is such a good player. I felt that way about her game, and she proved it today. Minus Olivia Miles and Dara Mabry. Short in the backcourt, but she's got uh, the most versatile game for Notre Dame. She's going to have to carry a lot, as she did today, as the Irish were able to get the win. And advance past NC State. So we're going to have a new champion for the first time in four years. Notre Dame knows something about winning ACC championships. About five straight for the Irish when they were number one seed. They did it again in 2019. NC State winners of the last three knocked out by Notre Dame earlier today. Kayla King getting a nice round of applause as she heads to the bench.
Yeah, Miami fans, just keep your eye on number 44. That's going to be one to watch for the future and in the postseason as Miami continues in the NCAA tournament. It's all about matchups when you get to the NCAA. And if you stay a 10, you're playing a 7. Most likely, I'm going to guess they're going to play a Big East team. I have a feeling. Final minute in the final game today from Greensboro. And a foul will send Julia Williams to the free throw line. Remember, she had the big game in the regular season against Virginia Tech, 23 points in that game, but just two tonight. Job well done by those Hokies who've been able to maybe get a little bit of extra rest on the bench. Deja Gregg who just inbounded the ball. Career high in rebounds for her tonight, by the way. She had 13. It is mostly Chicago Maroon in the stands remaining tonight. That Virginia Tech color. Shot clock is off. Area vets tries one, air balls, that attempt. Virginia Tech is trying to get the ball back. Hang on, wait for that final whistle. Keanu Trailer will track it down. And Virginia Tech now can make it official. Big time performance by the Hokies tonight, 68-42. The final, they are going back to the semifinals for the second straight year.